Rapper Friends, welcome to the fifth episode of Rocket City Yarn Company's podcast. I'm Lisa, and I am Rocket City Yarn. Now, since it's my fifth episode, today I would like to do a quick recap for all our new viewers, because we have 13 subscribers now. Yay! So, my company started about, I started about three months ago. I am a former chemist, um, and now I am homeschooling my little boy, and I have a lot more time to pursue my fiber crafts and yarn and all things fun with that, and I discovered how much I love dyeing yarn. It's like my favorite two things, being a chemist and being a, um, playing with yarn all mixed together, so I decided to start a yarn company. So, a couple months ago, I guess it was... Because I officially started around May 1st, um, I created the Rocket City Yarn Company. And then I decided to add a podcast because that is one of my favorite things um, since I started knitting was watching all the podcasts. And I thought, wow, I want to do that too. It's so fun. So I created this podcast and now I'm on episode five. Um, my original intent was to have um, kind of a bi-weekly thing going on, though um, June was a little busy, so I didn't get a whole lot done in June. Um, but for the most part, I'm sticking to my bi-weekly schedule, and what I'm doing is one week I'm doing the podcast, and then the next week I'm doing a short written blog on my website, rocketcityyarn.com backslash blog, and that's for people who like the written word because... I, I actually still like reading a lot, so um, I do read blogs, and so I decided to do a little written part for the people who like that. So, um, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today I wanted to talk about um, some fun loom designing that I've been doing, um, what I've been knitting, a recap of my store, and I'll talk a little bit about what I've been reading and watching. But before I do that, I have a little bit of a, I'm sorry to release. Okay, so last time I announced the giveaway winner, which I have it all packaged up right here, and it's not in the mail. I'm sorry. Tamara from Malta, I forgot to mail it last Saturday. It was on the list and I forgot to go to the post office. But here it is, it's Friday today. I'm going to try to go to the post office tomorrow on Saturday and it's all packaged and ready to go. So it will be there to you. I, I'm not sure how long it takes to get from Alabama, USA all the way to Malta. And I, I'm sorry for the time I added to it, but congratulations again on winning the birthday giveaway. Now, on to the fun stuff. So, um, Alabama, especially in North Alabama, around this time of year, July and August, it gets crazy hot. And we all get a little stir crazy and a little wishing for fall and cooler weather. So a lot, a lot of times I will kind of start doing projects to kind of get me in the, who it's going to be fall eventually, eventually, um, spirit. So a couple of days ago, I broke out my absolute favorite hat loom. This is a Cindy Wood um, 3 8 gauge 72 peg, peg hat loom. Um, I think it could be, you can really make anything with it, but I use it for hats. Um, and I like the 3 8 gauge because it is perfect for worsted weight yarn and makes a great hat. And I made, now this is a prototype, so this one is tiny won't fit my noggin or even my my eight-year-old wouldn't fit him either but um a little kiddo but basically I was making a little pumpkin hat I haven't even sewn it up yet but I was just seeing how I could make a little pumpkin hat on the loom so I tied up his little stem and this is supposed to be a little pumpkin thing so I thought that would be a really cute fun gift item so I think I'm gonna write that up and put it in the store um and so what I did with this is I made it on the loom, um, but now for my decreases, I did use, um, I call this pattern my, just use just about everything pattern because I used um, to do the decreases to make it kind of easy at the end. When I got to the tiny parts, I used um, just DPNs to, you know, to decrease the crown. And 
One of the biggest things that people have when they use looms, especially if they use EWRAP, the EWRAP type, is the cast on edges are not always the best. You know, you, they're loose and they just feel messy. Well, I prefer for my hats, and plus my little boy and my husband are really rough on hats, so um, I prefer to get a really sturdy cast on. So what I do is I, if you can see it, but I use a crochet hook and use it and do a crochet cast on onto the loom. And what this does is it gives you a fabulous edge. So what I'm gonna do, I might show um, a video where I just show how I make the loom because a lot of people are like, there's certain things I like about the loom and there's certain things I like about using a crochet hook and there's certain things I like about DPNs. Well, you know what? You can, you're not, you're not stuck using one thing or the other. You can use whatever you want. If you prefer to cast on the loom with a crochet hook, do it. If you prefer to do the, the, um, the bulk of the hat really quickly on the loom, do it. If you don't really want, want to deal with stretching out the yarn, trying to do the decreases on the loom, and you know it's much quicker using some little circulars or DPNs, do it. Because it can make these so fun. And these are great little charity hats or to give away as little fun little gifts. Um, as you can see, I haven't sewn it up yet, but I just wanted to show that to kind of get in the spirit of hopefully wishing for cooler weather. Now, in Alabama, for the most part, especially in northern Alabama, here, we do get a little bit of fall, but most of the time we just go straight from crazy hot to winter. Um, and our winters are kind of gray, and we do get a little cold weather because we're kind of close. We get kind of like the dips down from Tennessee and the little mountains a little bit, but we don't really get snow. Maybe once a year we get snow. But at least the weather is much cooler toward the end of October and November and the leaves do turn pretty colors here which I really enjoy because I've been in Huntsville Madison area about almost 15 years now but I'm originally from southern Mississippi where it was kind of pine trees and oak trees and we didn't really have the full different colored maples as much here and here there are a lot of really pretty yellows and reds and so that's something I, I really enjoyed about this area. The only thing that I do wish, now that I got crazy into knitting, is I wish it was a little bit colder and snowier so I could wear more knitting things. But other than that, I really do like this area because it is, um, it's called the Rocket City. Huntsville is a kind of a technology hub for the South. There's like tons of scientists and engineers, so I fit right in. There's a lot of jobs here and there's pretty much all kinds of things going on here because a lot of people here are really creative and a lot of the engineers and scientists here and other people they have like all these really fun interests and i mean we have a doctor who convention i mean for a small sized town we do have a lot of fun things going on so if you ever have a chance to visit come see the rocket city now what else did i want to talk about today well i was going to talk about i need a haircut the hair that i could draw um but we now my cat is wandering around, so I'm gonna have to be kind of covert with this. But I wanted to go back and show some of the things that I have in the shop. Because I think I need to revamp my website a little. Because when I set the shop up, it was kind of automated. Um, and it kind of just said, you know, add your inventory. And I did, and then put a picture. But I've noticed when, you, when I tried shopping on it myself, I felt like you really couldn't see everything that was available because you really had to know to click down on the drop down menu to see the colors. And so I think I'm going to revamp everything and make it individuals so that it will be easier to see the colors. But before I do that, I'd like to kind of show what I have because I know people are getting ready to do, to do holiday knitting and holiday shopping. And so I wanted to show some of the pretty stuff I have. So this um, particular colorway that I did it is a yellow and then there are hints of navy blue. I called it a midnight. I think I called it midnight galaxy. Um, and then this one um, is just so pretty. So this is a sock set. So several of my items I did as sock sets because I know a lot of people like to put um, heels and toes different. And also, at least for me, when I knit socks, I wear a five and a half, ladies, US. So I don't use, so if I get a 100 gram skein, I don't use, but like, I think it's 52 grams for a pair of my socks. Well, that means that I have a lot left, but not enough for another pair. But when I throw in this 20 gram 
mini skein, then I can get two pairs out of this. And so I think that's a much better deal for people who, you know, and that way you can make one for yourself, make a shorty pair, have a gift um, for people, and make one for yourself and a gift. And, you know, I just feel like people get more out of their money than, because I tend to have a lot of kind of odds and ends left over, and I kind of wanted to avoid that for people. Now, this is a sparkle yarn that I did. Um, I called this one Pink, Pink Ladybug. And it is self-striping, and it's kind of in a, a black, kind of a dark blacky gray, and a really pretty fuchsia. And I called it Pink Ladybug. And I love this one. I'm going to make a lot more of this one because that, that one came out really pretty. Um, this one I haven't shown a lot of, but this is a beautiful one that I did called, um, I named this one, if I remember correctly, I named this one Sparkle, um, Sparkle Fire Soft Set. And so this one is just the, the 100 gram skein and this is the 8020 Sparkle Yarn Merino and Nylon with the Stellina, with the fiber tip Stellina. And then I did a little kind of a orangey, darker, a little bit darker, but coordinates really well to, for the sock set. So that one is really pretty. And actually, I'm kind of hoping that um, I had a chance to dye some more of those because when I did stitches, I got the most beautiful orange beads that I think would make a gorgeous, gorgeous shawl with that. So I'm gonna have to make some more of that for myself. Now here is one more stain that I had of the um, Cardinal, I think I named it Cardinal Sparkle. And so I made a mini of both the midnight blue, kind of a navy midnight blue color that's in it and the yellow. And so I think I'm gonna sell this as a set together so that whoever buys this will get two minis. Because that, you know, for somebody that may have a little bit larger foot, that would definitely get you your two pairs. Then, this is the um, Nebula colorway that I did. And it's got blues and pinks and blacks and grays, and it's just a gorgeous color. And then the little mini skein, this is the pink Nebula that I made kind of in the same color, but pink to go with it. So that is another sock set that's just gorgeous. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now this was another nebula that I did with, look at that turquoise one. Oh, I love that one. So I had that one done. Now one self-striping that I did not, I haven't skeined up yet, is that I made, I call it Villains, and it's like a green and purple, kind of like, I call it kind of a cross between, if you imagine, the Joker and Malif Maleficent, or whatever you call her, from Cinderella, like, kind of like a villain colors. And I think that one I really like too. I think that will make a great Halloween color. Now this one is another nebula where I did the mini skein in more of the purple color that was in the mini skein, in the main, co main color way. So that is also really awesome. Uh, now this is the um, shawl set that I have in the shop right now. And it is one of my favorites. I love this green. And then the multi that goes with it. And then the beautiful speckled gray that, goes, that came with it. I mean, they are gorgeous, just gorgeous. And these are all Merino, um, Superwash Merino, 80%, I think it's like 80 or 75, and then 20 nylon, and then 5% Stellina, because all of these are sparkle. So I kind of did Summer of Sparkle. Um, and then I have the mini skein sets that are the Nebula set minis for people that just want to try things out and see what they like. So I just wanted to show that because um, I'm going to definitely redo the website I think, to make it easier to see, but I wanted everyone to see that because it came out so beautifully. Now this, um, I can't wait to scan up the villains because it came out kind of like this and it's also sparkly. But then 
Next to my shop, I got, um, right now I have up ready to die some worsted weight. And if I remember correctly, this worsted weight is just, um, just wool. I don't think it's super wash. I'll have to go back and look. But it is going to be beautiful. And I've got some gorgeous fall colors that I got. So I'm, um, guys, that I'm going to try to make some really pretty, but I better close this bin back up before the cat gets in here. He's watched me, he's only seven months old, but he's watched me undo the tub enough that he knows if he keeps hitting that corner of it, he can pop it open. And we had a little mishap the last time I podcasted. I showed this purple, pretty dark purple, oh, actually it was blue, dark blue um, skein that I got um, when I was shopping in Chattanooga a couple weeks ago. And I thought I got everything and put it away from when I was podcasting on the kitchen table, but I sorry about that. The kiddo brought me chocolate. His theory is if I bring mom a piece of chocolate, then I, he can have chocolate too. And while I'm probably shouldn't let him eat chocolate that much, but you know what? It's not a bad theory because I do like these. But anyway, so what I was saying, so no, the mishap I had was I thought I got everything and cleaned up the kitchen table and brought everything back in my little office slash crack room. But the kitten, when I wasn't looking, grabbed the blue yarn, that really pretty, silky, wool wonderfulness that I got. And he had taken it, carried it off. It, was, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't wound yet, so it was still in its pretty skein. And he must have carried it off, but then forgot about it. So I found it hidden in the homeschooling, our dining room's our homeschooling room, hidden under there behind the curtains, like he was hiding it for a late future thing. So he didn't get it, he didn't get it um, beat up yet, but I might as well eat my chocolate. But he did, it was a little wrinkly, but I was able, and so I was um, able to wind, wind it up. Now, luckily, husband gave me the most awesome last Christmas it was a Stanwood wood um Stanwood winder he gave me the wooden umbrella this year um, stay, um to put it on and then he gave me the winder and that messy skein would have not made it had I tried to do it by hand I don't think but because I'm able to stretch it out really good on that Stanwood wooden um umbrella swift it came out so much not so nice and so there was no damage not get chocolate on my on my pretty yarn. So this is the skein. It survived. <laughs> so I started on the um, mittens that I talked about last time from the, the Chihuahua mittens from the Wild Mittens and Unruly Socks book that I talked about last time. Now if you want a full review of this book, go to my written blog because last week I talked about it and it was so, oh my gosh, I love it. And I wanna like show too much, you know, to be rude or anything. But I wanted to show you, for those of you who, like me, I wear glasses and I have trouble seeing tiny charts. This is the first time I've ever had a book where the charts were so big, I don't have any trouble with them. I just wanna show that real quick. Flash, look how nice that chart is. Um, I just wanna applaud that because Yes, I have a little line magnet that magnifies, and yes, I have other little things to try to make it easier, but that was well written. So, when I saw the directions, it said to that I needed DPNs. Well, I hadn't used DPNs, like tiny DPNs, like ever, because I the only time I use DPNs really is when I'm closing the top of a, a crown of a hat, and so I usually typically use um, size, you know, six or eight, you know, because I'm using a larger, larger size yarn. And these are, you know, fingering weight and DK. So I was like, well, what, what needles can I use? Um, and so I looked in my stash, needle stash. I actually found, because I think it called for um, like a two, a one and a half or a two, and then a bigger one, a two, two and a half. Like, so you use two different, two different sizes. One a little smaller for the cuff and then a bigger one for the hand. Well, I actually found a pack, I still have the wrapper, of size 2 DPNs yeah, for Knit Picks in my needle stash. I couldn't believe it. What are the odds? Every time I start something new, I have to end up getting needles, it seems like, even though I have 
the interchangeable circulars because I don't really keep a lot of, out of straights because I, I pretty much am exclusively circular needles. And so I was like, great. Well, I have a pretty small hand. So, I mean, honestly, most youth size um, knitting patterns fit me. So, especially my wrist. So I was like, well, I don't have the bigger size needle. What's it gonna look like if I use all of the same size needle? Cause I knew size two, I have some size two in my circular, my nine inch circulars and they fit really well when I made a little pair of um, little wristlets once. So I knew it fit me. What if I made the whole pattern in just the size two needles? So first thing I did, so I haven't done a whole lot yet, but I wanted to show so the cuff is this cute little pico edge which i've never done before it's cute and i'm like that's gonna fit really really well and i just started on the colored part with the diff with the color chart and i was like so but if you look because you fold over and it's kind of like a double like almost like a little folded brim for the cuff and so when i used and this is where the direction said to change to your larger needles before you started the color chart well i did not change i did like I think I'm on, I've done five rows to see how it would look and yes I think it would fit my wrist just fine but once it gets into the bigger part of the hand I'm thinking it might need to be just a little bit bigger so I ordered some more of these DPNs in a little bit bigger size um, and from nitpicks and they should be here on Sunday I think it's or Saturday maybe tomorrow so I'm hoping that it comes soon so um, I can, because I'm really excited to finish these, but I had never done a folded cuff with a little pico edge. I don't know if you can see it really, but it came out so cute. So I'm really excited to finish these. And now this, I'm, about, I'm kind of probably stretching the limits of the pattern, but um, this is the DK like it called for. But this, I didn't have any, a contrasting color in DK that I really liked as good as these two colors together. So this is a, um, I don't think it's DK, I think it's fingering weight, um, solid wool, which is one of the balls I had left from my Doctor Who shawl. So I'm like, well, um, yeah, they're not exactly the same size, but with the small tight knit, I think I can get away with that. So we shall see. And so that's the only other thing there that I wanted to talk about. What's next? Um, so what I was I had started talking a little bit. Oh, my chocolate's already melting. So do these under these lights. Um, I wanted to talk about what's caramel chocolates. So good. I don't know how you say it. Jardelli caramel squares. They're my favorite. Anyway, so what have I been reading or watching? Well. We, I've been watching, I know it's embarrassing to admit, but I've been watching the Christmas movies on Hallmark. I think it's Movies and Mysteries because um, kind of get me in the holiday spirit and get me motivated to get ready for holiday knitting because every year I have this wish list of all these things that I would like to knit and I just don't get around to all of them because I don't, I don't really start until it's like October and then it just goes quick. So this year I said, I'm starting in July. So I feel like I'm getting I'm getting better about my holiday knitting. So I started watching on AMC Nosferatu, I think that's how you say it. It's a horror sci-fi kind of show. But when I was watching it, I'm like, this is good, but I feel like I'm really missing something, like there's more to the story or something. So I went back and looked it up, and it's based on a book by Joe Hill, which, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe is Stephen King's son, which makes sense because I love Stephen King. So, and their writing styles are a little similar, a little, a little different, a little, a little quirkier, but close. So, same genre. So I was like, well, I'm going to get the book so I can really get the details of the story. So I said, well, I have one Audible credit left. So 
I will get the audiobook so I can do it while I'm knitting. And Stephen King, if you ever want to get your money's worth, like you only have one Audible credit left, Stephen King, or Joe Hill too, because it's the books wrong too, is a great buy on an audiobook because you get a ton of hours per credit. So if you're like, I've only got one credit left and I need, you know, I would like plenty of listening time, I have a long trip, get a Stephen King book for your audiobook because, um, or, you know, something in that genre because you will get so many hours. Because a lot of these other books, they're great, but. You know, you don't get a lot of bang for your buck because they're a lot shorter. So, that's what I've been watching. It's kind of a sci-fi story. It's pretty good. And I have really, really enjoyed it so far. I am probably... I think I've... There's like one more... Maybe one more episode DVR'd on my... Maybe two more episodes DVR'd on my TV. But I stopped watching it because I want to read the book. First, so I'm about halfway through the audiobook now, and it's great company when I knit because a lot of time um, when I do my knitting work, um, it's usually when the the kitten, the little man, the boy which you saw earlier, and the husband are all asleep, and the house is quiet, and I can do what I want to do. But and that's one of the reasons I started watching knitting podcast um, when I is you know keeps me company, and then I also do the audiobooks. Um, because that's great. So, but one thing that I noticed, and I apologize to all the knitting podcasters out there, is I would kind of hit go on YouTube with knitting podcasts, just listen to them over and over. And then I never really clicked on like or subscribe or anything because I would just be busy doing my knitting. So I thought about it and I said, you know, I ask people to like and subscribe my videos. But how much liking and subscribing do I do? Really? Do I stop and actually do that? Or do I just watch the video? Type in the subject and watch the video? Well, I tend to just type the subject in and watch the video. So I apologize to all the people who I have watched your content and have not liked and subscribed. I am now making a conscious effort to go and do that because I love all your videos and I've seen all, almost every, once I watch one and I like it, I usually watch the whole list. I start the first one and I go all the way through. Now, I know I only have five videos, so there's not a whole body of work yet, really, to see. But, I just want you to know that I promise to do more diligent with my liking and subscribing. And I would also appreciate it, if you like it, to please like, subscribe, and watch my videos. And, if you prefer the written word, don't forget to check out my blog. Because it comes out on the weeks that I don't have a video, I do a blog. And... If you really like the yarn that I feature on this show, then please go to my shop. I'm going to be doing a little updating, but the so you saw the inventory, so and so you can. I'm just gonna re rework some of the photos and make it look a little bit easier to shop on. But you saw it, and if you're interested, I also do custom orders. So if there's a color that you would like or a base that you would like something on. Just send me an email through the website and I will see if I can dye that for you because I know um, you get something in your head and you're like, no, I really, there's a color that I really want and I haven't been able to find anywhere. Well, just text me and we I will look through my dyes and I'll make a few samples and maybe we can come to something that'll get you where you want to be. So until next time, happy knitting and don't forget, it's okay to want to stay home and knit. Like and subscribe. See you later.